Hello, this is Terracon4 here for a video tutorial on the health and damage system. So, this was requested to be done with the first and third person example content packages. So, here we've got a copy of third and first person character. Here's the copied first person. Here's the copied third person in the world. This is the first person demo level. So, what we're going to want to do is make so that we can shoot the player and deal damage to them. <laughs> Suffice to say, right now, that doesn't happen. So, first things first, let's look at the first person character. For the purpose of actually dealing damage, and also so I can actually talk while I'm doing those little shooting demos, I'm going to lower the volume on its gun. Either way, so, when you press the button, input action, fire, it goes here, plays the animation, plays sounds and stuff, gets the viewpoint, finds the location of the gun offset from the player camera, then it performs a line trace by channel, visibility, key part here, and then it will, is assuming it hits a valid object, it will check if it's simulating physics, and if so, it adds a little impulse to bounce the cubes around and stuff. So, since we're just going to keep using this line trace by channel, there are other methods that, like, say, you could do a on-hit collision with a projectile. It's worth saying the uh, old first-person example package actually fired out a little bouncing ball. I overall like that one more, but the newer version, apparently they changed it, so now it's just a line trace. So, hold down S, and uh, with that I can easily left-click and open a sequence node. Control-click to drag this over here. So now, assuming that we hit something that is valid, we will not only check to add the impulse, we're going to want to do something else to the hit actor. So, damage actor message. We'll create this. Target is going to be the actor that was hit. The damage modifiers, pretty much you can just drag off from here and promote to variable, make a blank one. I've already got, come on, drag on. I made a blank one here. So there's nothing in it like you put in a tag if you wanted to add something. But right now, we're not going to bother with that. So, damage caused by self. It's not a gun, it's just the character themselves. Instigator, get controller. If it's a player controller, an AI controller, whatever, this is the entity that is considered to do it. Well, this is the object itself that does it. So, hit component, and the hit bone. And let's say we deal 10 points of damage. So, with this, our little line trace will, when it hits something in the visibility channel, have an attempt to send a damage message to it. So, damage message. Compile this. And just to be sure... Okay, yeah, that's quite an... Still, you'll notice that when we shoot through it, we can literally shoot through the third-person character. Uh, this won't be an issue with some objects, but with a third-person character, it is. So, first of all, let's click on the mesh. Collision preset is character mesh, which does not have visibility set. So, we're going to adjust this to custom so that we can enable visibility. So. That's not necessarily needed if you're using physically colliding stuff. You could also make a separate channel on your own that handles for projectiles and attacks, separate from the visibility ones, but in our case, we're just using visibility to keep it quick and simple. So now, we go here, and it's not even the keys behind him because he's actually taking the hits. Doesn't mean anything right now because he doesn't have any health. So, add health BP. And now we've got our health blueprint component here. But in order to actually send any damage to it, we'll need to go here to class settings, interfaces, and add the damage and health blueprint interface. Compile. Now, here we've got this interfaces gone on the left side. So we drag out reference to the health blueprint and do damage actor message. Image actor, there we are, health PP. Yes. Like so. 
So we just connect these in. Since this is the same actual interface message, we're just forwarding it from our character to the health component itself. You could send it directly to the health component initially from an attacking actor or weapon or whatever, but this way you can get access to it on the actual character itself if you want for middle working, whatever you may need. So yeah, that's that. And with this, it can now send damage to the health thing. We'll want to see this, so let's add a child actor. A child actor is a separate actor, which is effectively just being stuck inside of this one. So, child actor class. And let's do the shield and health bar, since we'll be adding a shield in a short bit. So. There we go. And... Default values, let's say we'll use one. Alright, so default values, we're going to use 150 for the health, and we'll just leave 100 for the shield. This is, mind you, just the initial little visual here. You don't actually have to update them here if it's being automatically updated from the health component. And since we're going to have the main health be our element, health element 0, we'll set this to 0 for now. So, go to the health blueprint component. Keywords is the most important value. This here means health element zero. So, health element zero, health element zero. Uh, we'll want our main health to have 150 health. So, now keywords, let's go with space. What does a space mean? There's a little space in there. That means that anything that any other keyword isn't taking, this health element will take the damage for it. So, in this case, this means it'll take damage for anything that hits any part of the actor. So, 150 health for any part of the damage. And health bar, because it's got that health element up auto update from zero, that's referencing that element. So, compile, save, and do it. Test now. So, we're going to have to shoot the field of damage. Still, let's try and make this a bit more interesting. So, now, health BP. Say we want to deal more damage when we hit the head. So let's add another health element. Now it's health element 1. Let's see, even though it's effectively number 2, it's still 1 because it's counting in base 0 arrays do that. So the keyword will be head because the character mesh and mannequin mesh, the skeleton, the bone that controls this part of the mesh is head, is what it's called. So any bone that contains head in it or a component that contains head will be triggering the keyword for here we go, this part. So in this case now, if you get shot in the head by something, then head is what's going to take that damage. If you add a component out here named floaty box 3, you could put in a floaty box 3 and anything that attacked that object, the component, would count for that thing. So in this case, if you hit the head, we want this. So now because we've got this, this thing which was kind of just a blank catch, anything that doesn't get from anything else, it's now going to let the health element 1 take it. But we don't actually care about health, so max health 0. Because we don't actually... this thing won't be having its own separate health bar, we're just using this to modify the damage applied to our main health bar. So, armor value percent. Leave element 0 at 0, we're not modifying that at all, but element 1, which is for our head's damage, 50% would cut damage in half. But let's do negative 100 to double damage, so that adds 100% damage to it. And we could also do the same for healing, if we want this to take double healing. But we're not really going to be messing with healing right now. That's pretty much just negative damage values count as healing. So, And you'd also need to then enable that it could be healed here. So forwards damage to element is important. Health element 1 is the head, it doesn't have any health of its own, but it will still take double damage, so what do we do? Forward this to health element 0. So this is now going to take double damage, it'll modify it by that, and then it will just forward that value on to the other health element 0. So with this... Come up and shoot the body, we deal 10 damage, we shoot the head, and we deal 20 damage. So. The basic idea here is that each health element will receive damage in some way, 
and some of the health elements will actually have a health value. Not all of them have to have the health value. So we've got, this is for headshot damage, is health element 1. And it's forwarding its damaged value onto element 0, which has an actual health pool. Now let's say that we want the shield. 